Hello and welcome to the London Legal Podcast, presented by Hodge, Jones and Allen Solicitors. Our leading solicitors share their views on latest legal issues and developments, and how the law might affect you, because we care about righting wrongs and providing first-class personal legal services. So please enjoy this, the London Legal Podcast, presented by Hodge, Jones and Allen Solicitors. Hello and welcome to this episode of the London Legal Podcast. My name is Chun Wong and I'm the head of the dispute resolution team at Hodge, Jones and Allen Solicitors. Today, we will be discussing Inheritance Act claims, which can allow you to claim financial provision from an estate if you've been left out of a will. We'll go through some of the basics, including the court's approach, the pitfalls, and also time limits on making a claim. I have with me my colleague, Rohel, who's a partner in the dispute resolution team. Thank you for the introduction, Chen. My name is Rohel Amin, and I qualified as a solicitor in 1999. During my career, I have specialised in chancery matters, including contested probate disputes. Thanks, Rohel. So to start things off, could you give us some background to the Inheritance Act and explain when it might come into play? Of course. A person may leave their estate to whoever they want by making a will. If a person dies without making a will, then their assets will be distributed in accordance with the intestacy rules, which are a one-size-fits-all approach that governs who their assets will go to. There may be some people who do not have a share or reasonable share in the estate, either under the terms of the will or the intestacy rules, but were dependent on the deceased. The Inheritance Provision for Family and Dependence Act 1975, commonly referred to as the Inheritance Act or 1975 Act, is a law to protect people who are financially dependent on another person when they die. The Act enables some defendants to apply to the court for financial provision from the deceased estate. So Rohal, can you explain who can actually apply under the 1975 Act? The Act is very specific about who can apply for financial provision. Section 1 of the Act specifies the categories of people who can apply. The following people may apply. The spouse or civil partner of the deceased, the former spouse or civil partner of the deceased, as long as that person has not remarried or entered into a subsequent civil partnership, a person who, for the two years prior to the death, was living with the deceased as spouse or civil partner, the child of the deceased, a person who was treated as a child by the deceased, and any other person who was being maintained by the deceased prior to their death. Okay, so we now know who can apply under the Act, and how does the court assess claims under the 1975 Act? The court approaches any claim in two distinct stages, as demonstrated in the decision in the case of Robinson versus Bird and another. Firstly, the court will consider whether reasonable financial provision has been made for the applicant by the deceased under the will or through the intestacy rules. If the court finds that reasonable provision has not been made, it will then consider what, if any, provision should be made. The question of reasonable financial provision differs depending on which category of person is applying. Whether financial provision has been made will be assessed by the court taking into account all of the relevant circumstances and the factors listed in Section 3 of the Act, which are the current and future financial resources and needs of the applicant and the beneficiaries of the estate, any obligation and responsibilities which the deceased had towards the applicant and the beneficiaries, the size and nature of the estate, any physical or mental disability of the applicant or any beneficiary, and any other matter which the court may consider relevant, for example, a party's conduct. In cases where the applicant is a spouse or civil partner, the court will also consider what they would have likely received had the marriage or civil partnership been terminated by divorce or dissolution rather than death. Once the court has determined that reasonable financial provision has not been made, then what can they do to remedy the situation? The court's powers are very wide and it has numerous options available. If the court believes that the deceased had not made reasonable financial provision for the applicant, it can make one or more of the orders provided by Section 2 of the 1975 Act. The court may award a specific lump sum or make periodic payments to the applicant. 
where the parties are arguing over specific property, the court can order that property to be sold and the proceeds split or it to be transferred to one of the parties outright. The court may also declare that any property be held on trust for the applicant and or other beneficiaries. Are there any restrictions or time limits for making a claim, Rahal? The Act only applies to estates where at the time of death the deceased was domiciled in England and Wales. The Act provides that any claim must be made within six months of the date of a grant of probate or letters of administration. If the claim is not made within the prescribed time limit, it will be necessary to seek the permission of the court to bring a claim. Thank you, Rohal, for providing a very helpful summary of how to make a claim under the 1975 Act and the associated pitfalls. It's clear that a claim under the Act is not straightforward and there's a short time limit to bring a claim. So having the guidance and support of a specialist solicitor is often beneficial and can help bring about a quick resolution. I think there will be a rise of Inheritance Act claims as a result of COVID, where people have died unexpectedly before they've had time to put their financial affairs in order, like making a will. And these claims can affect even the rich and famous. You may have heard that in October 2020, George Michael's partner, Kenny Goss, made an Inheritance Act claim against his estimated £100 million fortune. The claim was eventually settled in May 2021. The dispute resolution team at Hodge, Jens and Allen Solicitors have experience in advising, making and defending 1975 Act claims on behalf of our clients. If you wish to discuss a possible claim or any other contested probate claim, then do please get in touch with us. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to the London Legal Podcast, presented to you by Hodge, Jones and Allen Solicitors. To listen to more podcasts, follow us on SoundCloud or visit our website www.hja.net for interesting opinions and the latest legal information. Or if you need our help, call 0808 2780 216.